Hey, what's up, guys? Tugi here, back again with another episode of my Buffalo Bills franchise mode series. You know what it is. For those of you who did not make it through the marathon of the last episode, although, bravo, round of applause to those who did, but for those of you who did not, I guarantee you thought to yourself, screw that, I'll just watch the next episode and he'll recap what he did, and guess what? You're absolutely right. So we went through the rest of the regular season, it didn't go that well, we lost Kyle Williams and Lorenzo Alexander to retirement, and we ended up signing Shane Ray, Mike Hilton, Jake Elliott, Dante Fowler Jr., and Ryan Shazier... Shazier. I always thought it was Shazier, and then I heard fuckface McGillicuddy Goodell call him Shazier, and I'm like, I don't know what it is now. But regardless, he was still in the game. Of course, we used EA's first roster update. They didn't take him out, so he was in. Uh, future reference, of course, uh, now that the uh, franchise guys' rosters are fully updated. Whatever series we do after this, we'll have that roster, so it's a little bit better. Uh, but those are the signings we ended up making, and I'm sure that the changes are far from over as we are ready for the draft. But again, when we look at this team, there's a lot of players that I'm going to try to move. Even if it's just getting back very minor draft picks, even draft picks for next year. Whether it's an A.J. McCarron who we really don't need. Whether it's an overaged wide receiver like Andre Holmes. I might as well see if I can get anything for players that I don't plan on having on this team. Let's be honest. I could sit here, handicap myself, and eventually get to where I want to be. Or I could just say, fuck it, and let's go ahead and build this team, make these drastic changes now that we're here in our first offseason, and try to get this team into a winning position. That begins now. And for the record, to anybody who, of course, watches me hockey-wise and says, hey, a simulate draft, you want to do a series where the team picks for you? Yeah, maybe we will in the future. That said, I have a couple of things to do. Uh, the main thing for me is I am going to go through... And uh, pretty much set up my draft board. So allow me uh, a minute to make a jump cut. It'll be two seconds in real time for you. For me, it's going to be about 20 minutes probably to sit here. Go through every goddamn position that we scouted and find the best of the best that are worth taking. I'll set up our draft board. That way you guys will know at the very least who I'm targeting. And if we miss out on anybody great, well, then them's, them's the breaks, I do suppose. But give me a minute. I'll set this up. And we'll continue on from there. Playoffs? All right, we're good. I swear to you that only took 20 minutes. It only took 20 minutes. And some of you are saying like, oh, come on, it wasn't 20 minutes. Oh, it was 20 minutes. That said, our draft board is set. Again, we're not looking for any quarterbacks in this draft. We are sticking with Allen for as long as we possibly can. Running back-wise, we have a few decent options. Obviously, Bryce Love would be the best option. If he's there at the end of the first round, we're certainly going to look for him. The plan is to go with McCoy for this next season, but after that, we need to think of our future. So having a McCoy-Bryce Love one-two punch or even Damian Harris could work out quite well. Wide receiver-wise, there are also plenty of good options. Ideally, we'd find a future one-two punch with Benjamin. It's not an extreme need, uh, but having seen what Debo Samuel can turn into, I am very tempted. A.J. Brown, for that matter, as well. So that might be something we need to take a look at. Tight end, there's only one target, but ideally he'd be the starter because I'd like to trade Charles Clay and probably will. But Russell Bullocks could be that guy for us out of Boise State. Obviously, the O-line is a huge problem, and we will probably draft at least one person in each position at O-line, it's a major issue. Defensive end, it's not an extreme need at the moment. Uh, sure, Nick Bosa would be nice. Joe Jackson turns into a monster from what I've seen. Uh, but even Caldwell, Buckley, or Sheffield could work. Defensive tackle, uh, look, I like Lotulele. I think I... Lotulele? Close enough. Star. I'm, tr I'm working on it. You can tell. At least I'm trying. Um, I mean, ideally, we have the other guy underneath him. I'd like to bring in one of these defensive tackles, though. I and uh, I mean, Oliver or Gary could work. Both, I think, are projected to go early. They are. So, as far as our draft pick situation, we have the ninth and 13th here in the first round. We're probably going to end up with more, as I mentioned. Uh, outside linebacker, Perry Brown would be a nice addition in case Shane Ray doesn't really make it. Middle linebacker, we do not need. There are some good ones, and I know from my Lions run on Twitch, Alan Richardson turns into a monster but it's not an extreme need. I can't imagine we'll take one in the first round unless someone really slips. Uh, outside linebacker, though, I kind of plan on trading Jerry Hughes 
So getting one of these two, Osbury or Drake, could be big for us. Corners, we'll end up probably taking one or two. It's not an extreme need. And really, the secondary isn't an extreme need. At safety, we're fine. Getting Howard Willie would be okay. Uh, and getting Joel Red later on in the draft would be okay. Gardner Johnson also turns into a beast. Although, I changed him over to linebacker in my run. And we'll look to take a punter in the seventh round. So with that... With that, oh boy, here's the problem. Though. Like I mentioned, I think we have to prioritize the offensive line. That's not the sexiest thing to do, we'll say, but it needs to be done. And I have these listed in order of how I'd prefer to end up getting these guys. So Dieter is our number one choice at left guard. Estandia is our number one choice. I made him sound Spanish. Estandia is our number one choice at center, and then at right tackle, Latave and Lowry would be the uh, the main option. So, uh, I want to get rid of players now for the sake of getting extra draft picks in this draft, but obviously we can't afford to have that many first-round options. I'm afraid of who Tennessee might pick. I really am. Of course, the good thing is we do have backup options as well, and if I go back to the offensive line... Again, one of these three, or one of these four in the first round is a necessity. Getting Dieter would be amazing. Stemke's not a terrible backup. Either one of these two would be fine. Uh, projected as a mid-first rounder for center. Dieter's early? No, he's also mid-first. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, Sentef we don't have to worry about for now. And Lawry is late first round. We might not have to trade up at all, actually. It's actually right at that ninth pick where it seems to cut into... Uh, mid-round territory. So, even though it's not technically, you know, mathematically where it would be. So, I think we'll be okay to not move up. We are going to focus on the offensive line. Nick Bosa, I imagine, will be the number one pick. Oliver and Rashawn Gary will be off the board. Like I said, it sucks, but I just don't know if we have the assets to trade up. We do, but we need to look for a lot of depth in this draft. So, as much as I'd love to get Oliver and Gary, uh, Sloan later on, is probably a, a better bet, I would say. So with that, let's go ahead and move forward. We'll move to the ninth pick. We'll see how it plays out. And like I said, I'll look to make... Actually, you know what? Here, fuck it. Fuck it. Let's risk it. Let's risk it. Let's be risky. Let's be bold. Let's do it. I want to try and get rid of whoever the hell I can to bring in as many extra draft picks as I can. Uh, McCarron, Peterman, I'd love to get rid of you too. I can sign a random free agent. Uh, but then again, eh... Eh, I could bring in a rookie who's not going to be that much worse than McCarron, who we might be able to develop, who might even be cheaper, uh, or right around the same overall if they don't get drafted. So screw it, I'm willing to do that. Uh, DeMarco, you can stay. Who was the older one? It was Holmes. Is there any interest? And if you're not a fan of, uh, like, white flashing light, now is a good time to just close your eyes, and to, uh, which, I mean, you know, or not. Or, I mean, who the hell knows? Why there's this white flash, I have no idea. I would love to trade McCarron to the Patriots, although I wouldn't, because that would kind of screw them over. So there's not a ton of interest, but if I could dump these three players to Minnesota, I'd be cool with that. Uh, for the hell of it, I'm going to use a first, just to gauge interest. Not close, but a second round pick may be possible. How about a second and a seventh, just to be ridiculous here? Just a second? Just a third. Even then, that extra third round pick could pay dividends. Is that going to work? It's going to have to be a fourth and probably a seventh. That should work. Minnesota, are you good with that? You are. Thank you, Sim McCarron. Thanks for being here. We're going with our quarterback for the future. We get an extra fourth round pick. Again, nothing major. I'm good with it, though. Anything we can bring in right now, asset-wise, I am good with. Charles Clay, you're out of here. We're going to go with O'Leary, and I'm going to look for that other tight end. There might even be one in the draft, who ends up being half-decent. Every single member of this offensive line <laughs> is so bad. They're so bad. I'm willing to package them together. Minnesota's actually looking for the help there. Uh, I don't know if I want to work out another deal with Minnesota, but it might very well be possible. Seriously, EA, what is with this white flash? It drives me fucking insane. Um, and then the interest went away from Minnesota. Uh, you know, you know, Cleveland, though. Cleveland, if I could get anything... For these terrible offensive linemen. I'm going to do it. Not going to be able to get a first round pick for Clay. But a second and a sixth might very well be possible. Beautiful. I'll take it. Clay, we'll see you later. I'm going to develop uh, I'm gonna develop better options here. And like I said, I'm not afraid now to go through 
and find free agent replacements. Uh, Russell Bodine can stay, but like Adam Redman, you're gone. If I can get anything for you, you're gone and you are gone. Just get out. Although, yeah, I can find somebody better. I can find somebody better. Even if I get a seventh round pick, I don't care. I don't. All right, Kansas City, let's talk. Let's talk. How's a second round pick sound? There's no way. Holy shit. All right, well, a third round pick's going to work wonderfully. Like I said, if I can do this instead of just releasing them, I'm good. Third and a sixth? Is that good? Not quite. We'll try the seventh just to get whatever the hell we can. I am not delaying this process. We're going all in. Third and a seventh. That works for me. Didn't want to go to upgrade position. Thank you very much. I know I have my set plan here. I know it's a bit crazy. I know it might be a bit much. We're going for it. Dawkins can stay, obviously. Uh, everything there is good. Harrison Phillips is the guy I was talking about before. Might still be worth trying to develop him. Uh, AJ Jefferson, if I can get anything for you and Dion Lacey, I'm going to do it. Uh, Julian Stanford as well. Can I get anything? If there's one team, beautiful. Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Let's talk Turkey over Julian Stanford. How's the second round pick sound? That's hilarious. Is it is it a bit cheap? Maybe. Is this a bit much? Maybe. But at the end of the day, we didn't set rules on this. I gave you guys the opportunity to. Yet This, again, might be overkill. Might ruin the enjoyment for some of you. And hey, I get it. But at the end of the day, I'm here to win. And there's no guarantee that we will. A lot of these guys are still going to have to develop. It's no secret, of course, that the... Uh, that the trade logic is a little bit questionable. Uh, Jerry Hughes, I want to get rid of you, and I will. I will. I, I hate to do it, Jerry, but you got to go. You got to go. Vontae Davis is also going to be on the way out if we can swing this. Is there any team that's interested in Hughes and potentially Davis to maximize the value here? Not looking like it, so we'll just talk to Pittsburgh about Jerry Hughes. Let's go a first and a third just to see how close we are. How about just the first? Please? Close. Not close enough, though. We'll go second and how about a seventh or sixth next year just to kind of spread the wealth a little bit among the two drafts. That works. Jerry Hughes is off to Pittsburgh. We are getting rid of everything. It is a goddamn fire sale. It was going to have to happen eventually. We're just... Uh, we're, we're bumping up the process, uh, the process a little bit. Why the hell not? All of these corners, I'm pretty sure they were practice squad. If I can get anything for you, I'm going to. Because you're all terrible. There's no way anyone has any interest, and that's fine. But if I can talk to a Tampa and say, hey, how about a fourth round pick? What do you say? That doesn't work. I'll take them. I'll take a sixth. Give me anything. Anything. I'll take it. There we go. Fine by me. We need all the help we can get. <laughs> we need all the help we can get as soon as we can get it. I'm 99% sure none of those corners had uh, any decent development process at all. That extra six, no guarantees I even make that six. But in the future, that sixth rounder could be a part of a trade to move up and could get us a game changer. Like that sixth round pick as it is, I don't expect it to be anybody major. Uh, safety. Uh, Neil? Oh, nope. Nope, you can go. And uh, Rafael Bush is 32. You can definitely go. Marlo, you're also on the way out because we do not need you. We'll send you all out to Indy if you don't mind. As a fifth round pick just to get rid of him. Take him off our hands? Nope. Okay. How about a nice shiny seventh? Just take them. Please. That works for me. The last trade. The last holdout. Our former kicker, Mr. Hushka. The Hushkas. You're out of here. Is there any team that's looking for a kicker? No? All right. Well, Green Bay, let's talk. I don't know if you need a kicker. I don't really care. You can do whatever the hell you want. Just give me a fifth round pick if you would. Thank you very much. We're good to go. Is that going to upset some people? Decent chance of it. It's always going to be a bit polarizing to do what we just did. Uh, but this team needs changes. Why ignore the obvious? Uh, with the first pick, if the background wants to load, please. What did I break it? Resume draft. What, did I break it? What the fuck? Come on now, Madden. I have no other way to check to see who was selected here. Please work. I think I broke it. Ah. Uh, I'd like to see who was selected, though, please, Madden. If you don't mind. 
Can I please see who was selected? <laughs> I think I broke it. Shit. Okay, well the good news is I can quit franchise mode because it's an online one. A little bit of a little bit of behind the scenes work here. Please load properly this time. Please. Hey, there we go. So Ed Oliver went number one. Uh, no surprise. He is an absolute beast. Arizona takes Rashawn Gary, 77. So the two defensive tackles go first. Really no surprise there. The Colts go with A.J. Brown at wide receiver. Like I said, I want to trade up, but we're looking for uh, not necessarily quantity over quality. We're looking for both. Nick Bosa ends up going to Denver. The Cowboys at five take Ausberry, that outside linebacker we were looking at. All right. What else are we dealing with here? Let's see. Giants end up taking quarterback Justin Hebert, the Eli Manning replacement. Tampa takes Debo Samuel. Kind of hoping he was still. That's a really good pickup for Tampa. And the Jets end up with Devin White, the middle linebacker. So everybody I wanted at offensive line is still there. Michael Dieter is the number one guy as well in terms of... Uh, Projected on the big board, and I think he's going to be my first pick. Dieter, Lowry, and Estandia are without a doubt my first targets. Again, the clay replacement, he's there in the fourth round. Is it going to be as good as him? Probably not, but it makes sense to get something for clay now that he's hit 30. Outside linebacker, we might not get Drake. Uh, we do have Milano there just in case we don't end up with Drake later on. Uh, I'm feeling good about what we have set up here. Uh, and I think it's not really a, it's not really a question. Michael Dieter is going to be the guy. You could argue Stemke is the guy. Both are pretty well-rounded. I am going to go with Dieter, though, here with our ninth pick. The ninth pick of this draft. And like I said, we'll target Estandia or Dixon Kelly, and then hopefully Lawry later on in this draft. Uh, as far as who's here, yes, Bryce Love is there. We have we have other uh, we have other concerns, right? So let's go ahead. We'll draft for need. Michael Dieter's the pick. Quick development. Uh, number one in true talent, which is a lie. That's still glitched, unfortunately. Uh, but at 24 years old, he's a 79. Quick development. I am good with that. He's not a scheme fit at the moment, but there's a decent chance. With how dra actually, I can tell you right now, with how drastically we've changed this team, uh, there will be changes to the schemes heading into next season. So we end up with, hopefully, our left guard of the future, Michael Dieter. Welcome to the team, and our next pick is not that far from now. And actually, what are the draft picks situations right now? So we still have the 13th, and we have a ton of picks in the second, which means that we could trade up. Uh, so let's see here. The Dolphins end up taking 75, Jared Stidham, the quarterback. Baltimore with Farrell, 77 right end. And the Steelers end up with Jacobs, left guard. All right. So, we do have another option here. Let me take a look. Again, I'm focusing solely on the O-line right now. We need to carve this up. You know, we need to carve out this offensive line with first-round you know, first talent and just get this over with. Standy is there. A natural center. Stemke's better, though. <laughs> uh, you might... Again, that's the thing. I don't necessarily have to just draft someone um, at center and play them at center. We can move people around. Lowry, of course, looking pretty good. Dixon Kelly might even be better than Estandia. Estandia had better combine grades. It might, I think Estandia was mid-round projected and Kelly was late-round projected, which is why we have that there. Uh, but then there's Grant Stemke who we could also take. I am not against taking two left guards and moving one over to center. Not at all. And I really like the impact blocking. I really like the run blocking on Stemke. You know, I think he might be the guy even more than Lowry. Lowry's not bad. But I think we have a winner there with Stemke. That is exactly what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to take two left guards to start this draft. We need, ideally, five offensive linemen out of this draft anyway. That is not a bad way to start. 
I'm going to stick with my gut here. I'm going to stick with my gut. We're going to go with another offensive lineman. We're going to take Grant Stemke, who is 21-79 overall with quick developments. So far, so good with the way we have set things up here. We need protection for Allen, and these two will certainly help the run block and the, eh, just the finesse in general with his blocking. is a little bit low, uh, but there we go. Stemke and Dieter, welcome to the team. Now, the question of whether or not I trade back up into the first round. We'll see who ends up going off the board here. Green Bay has the next pick. They take Bradshaw, the middle linebacker, is 78. And yes, for anyone who's more familiar with NHL, the NHL does do this better. Uh, I'd have no way to check until after the draft to see who was just chosen. So the NHL does do that much better than Madden. Uh, as Lawry's off the board, he was a 79. Uh, Stania was only a 75, so we may have really dodged a bullet there. Uh, Lawry would have been a good pickup, though. Uh, Savon Drake, the other outside linebacker, is off the board, unfortunately, as is Alan Richardson. So again, it's tough. It's funny that Richardson still went to the Lions. Um, we're going to be missing out on some talent, it's obvious. But right now, number one need, offensive line, and making sure that Allen sees the age of 30 uh, without being ripped apart or in a wheelchair. Uh, so in terms of first-round talent, True Blood and Lamontag are still there. Or Lamont, yeah, Lamontag. Dixon Kelly's still there. And that's it for first-round talent. Again, in the second round, we could take Alfred. We could get Sentef, Tutin, St. Clair, Williams, Little, Engelberger. So there might not be the biggest need to trade up. We have quite a few second-round picks at this point. And again, unlike an NHL, of course, you can't just trade up and be like, I want all of these players because there is a certain amount of money that you have to pay somebody uh, depending on where you draft them. Bryce Love still being there, though is interesting that is very interesting to me let's take a look so Sheffield's there Joe Jackson is definitely someone I'm targeting Sloan Perry Brown there's nobody else here aside from Gardner Johnson and Tell which again at safety we're fine it's just a matter of whether or not I'm going to trade up into the first round and whether or not it's going to be uh you know potentially Bryce Love if he doesn't go Bryant French is off the board 80 overall left guard. That's a bit of a miss for us. Bentley, 78 defensive tackle. 22nd pick of the first round. Caleb Wilson, 78 tight end. Someone I didn't really uh, view as being that decent. Shea Patterson to Washington. 77 quarterback. The Patriots take Amon Richards. It's the highest rated wide receiver that we had on our board. The Vikings go with Lamontag. Damn, seven, or an 80 left guard. Whew. We still ended up with some good players, but there have been some higher overalls that have gone off the board. One point for the most part, but still a little bit frustrating. Houston takes True Blood. All right. That is it for the uh, the two left guards that were projected in the first round still, which means just Dixon Kelly's on the board, as is Bryce Love. Right. I'm so tempted because we don't have another pick anytime soon. I think I might just uh, I might just hold to where we're at right now, and we'll look to make more picks by not trading up. So, as much as it hurts, let's see. The Eagles take Cameron Hughes. You know what? At least we didn't take Cameron Hughes. <laughs> Damn, 71. That's brutal. Browns get a 78 tight end, Noah Fant. Carolina gets Dixon Kelly, the center. All right, so he's off the board. The Chargers get Ross Roberts. Bryce Love is still there. I'm so tempted. Rams take Moses Jones, 73 defensive tackle, and the Super Bowl champion Jaguars. Last pick of the first round, they take Clayton Thorson. All right, so we're in the second round. Bryce Love is still there. If he falls to us at nine, we're taking him. Uh, they take 73 middle linebacker Kevin Ledford. Yikes. Cardinals take Greedy Williams, 73 corner. All right, the Jets take 75 left tackle Jonah Williams. This is promising. The Broncos take Sloan. That defensive tackle I was looking at, that hurts. That hurts. It, again, defensive tackle would have been nice to get a replacement uh, for Lotulele, but what are you going to do? Cowboys take Ray Steets, 73 tight end. The Giants take Patrick Walton, 72 right tackle. There's two picks. I'm going to risk it. Tampa takes Howard Willie. 
Well, Baltimore. Oh my God, I was gonna say, well, Baltimore. Yeah, you all know Baltimore Colts. Uh, well, the Indianapolis Colts screw me over. Oh God, don't don't take Bryce Love. Yes, they take Jonathan Locker. Bryce Love somehow falls to us. We're making the ninth pick of the second round. He is still on the board, as is Tell and Gardner Johnson. Holy shit. Uh, so we're probably taking Bryce Love here because he's still available. There are some other good running backs as well, but my God. There's actually another chance of me taking someone in the third round because we need that little bit of depth. Uh, a wide receiver, there are some options. Decent chance that we take someone here in round two. Uh, DeMar St. Clair is there. Gordon Alford is there. Joe Jackson. Damn. Damn, 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 damn. Of course, we have back-to-back -back picks coming up. All right, I'm just trying to sort out who I want here. I think I'm going to take Bryce Love. I could get Joe Jackson to move someone over to defensive tackle if need be. Jackson's almost too good to miss out on. Spencer Richards is there. A couple of good corners. And then Gardner Johnson and Tell. Again, we don't need safeties, but shit. All right. Well, Bryce Love fell to us. I don't know if he's good enough to be the McCoy replacement, but we're going to find out. Bryce Love is my pick. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's good. That's good. 22 years old, 80 overall, star development. Uh, LaShawn McCoy, we're going to get a year or two out of you, and then you're out of here. Bryce Love is the future here in Buffalo. There we go. Fucking rapid. Uh, the elusiveness, the break tackle, they're okay. I'm all right with this. <laughs> I'm all right with this. Bryce Love too good to deny with that pick. We'll see who the Dolphins select, and then we have back-to-back -back picks. But that might be the steal of the draft thus far. They take 73 left guard Wade LaRock. So we have back-to-back -back selections here, and we're going to be able to do some more damage, which I am very happy about. So running backs, again, we don't have to worry about anybody for the moment. Wide receivers, we have Marquise Brown, Paris Campbell, and Martin Toller at this point. Offensive line, we need to look for at least one, and I'm probably leaning towards Alford. Let's see. B, B minus, B minus. And Claire is straight B minus. So yeah, we'll probably go for uh, for Alford. Run block, pass block. I mean, really, in fairness, neither should be terrible. There is Joe Jackson, which again, I'm so tempted because he has turned into a beast for me in Detroit. Oh, God. Outside linebacker Spencer Richards. Again, we do need a replacement there. I'm not overly set on him compared to some of these other ones because I have to be honest, I could take Gardner Johnson and put him at outside linebacker again. And I probably will. I think I'm going to take Gardner Johnson. And I think I'm going to take the one of the two offensive linemen. Let me look at St. Clair. 35 reps on the bench press, relatively agile, pretty good speed in general, at least 23. I know he was a late round projected, we do have the 28th pick. And then Alfred, also late round projected. I think we could get one of the two with the 28th pick. I think we could. Without having to move up, I can't imagine we're going to miss out on both of them. Maybe it's the right time to try and take a wide receiver. Outside chance of that. I think I know who I want. I know who I want. First up, Chauncey Gardner Johnson. I know he turns into a beast. There are, again, a couple of players from my playthrough with this draft class, with Detroit on Twitch. I know how good they are. And I know that Chauncey Gardner Johnson's a fucking monster. <laughs> so I'm not surprised by those numbers. Not one bit. He is a beast. Uh, again, zone coverage. It's all it's okay to the point where he could play safety, uh, but when you look at those attributes, linebacker just yeah, especially that play recognition lower than we'd want it to be for a safety. But if we put him at linebacker, man, absolute monster, absolute monster. I cannot believe the three players that have fallen to me early in the second round. Because next up, unfortunately, I do have to sort by draft board. Uh, next up. No doubt in my mind, if you've watched me play with the Lions, you're not surprised. Joe Jackson is the next pickup. 22, with 78, quick development. Uh, I kept talking about him. He's reached a 90 overall for me on Twitch. So, yeah, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. 
So we get three absolute game changers in this draft to begin. Uh, I'm extremely happy. <laughs> when is our next pick, though, is my question. Again, it was 28th, and then we have three third-round picks. Right. We'll see how it plays out here in the second round. I don't plan on trading up. Uh, the Bengals get Ross Jeffrey, 74 left end. Saints get Reed Fricky. Damn Fricky. Uh, Mullen, 74 corner. Chiefs end up with St. Clair. All right, so St. Clair's off the board. There's actually a decent chance we miss out on that tackle. I'm going to risk it, though. Marquise Brown, 75 wide out. I'm going to risk it just because there are other O-linemen that we could pick up in this draft. Spencer Richards, the outside linebackers off the board. Patriots end up taking Marvin Tell, who's really good. 79 safety at a USC. Falcons with Alfred. All right, so the other O-linemen's off the board. Obviously not the highest overall, but he is off the board. Raiders get Paris Campbell, 75 wide out. Packers with DeAndre Baker, 76 corner. Washington with Toller, 73 wide out. Uh, Rutherford, 70 quarterback to the Patriots. There's your Brady replacement, apparently. Minnesota gets Kramer, 71 quarterback. Texans with Douglas, 72 tackle. And the Eagles take Bradford Chase. 74 outside linebacker. So who do we have available to us here that was on the board at this point? Damian Harris is still there. Our need for a, a good third running back is kind of low. I mean, obviously, we're going to look to develop Bryce Love. Uh, we do have a couple of wide receivers we could look for in later on. Bullocks will take them in the fourth round. Um, so, yeah, right now, all line, we're looking at Greg Little. Next up, we could take him in the third round. Uh, left end is Sheffield, right end, Montre Caldwell. Is there anybody else left that's projected for the second round? Marcus Simon. All right, Marcus Simon's the last one here projected for the second round. Is he worth taking? Good press, good zone. Man coverage is also okay, too. Uh, ran a 4-5, which is solid. He's 6-2, so I can forgive him for having the 30 vert. Relatively agile. I think we'll probably take him because I don't think we'll take McGarity or McLaughlin. McGarity I'm worried about just because, again, zone coverage is his highest stat. Uh, we'll take a look at him. Ran a 4-5. Decent vert at 6 foot. Not as agile as Simon. And McLaughlin ran a 4-6. Yeah. No, we're going to take Simon. He'll be the only corner that we take. Uh, let's let's do this. Marcus Simon It's going to be my guy here at corner to add to the secondary. He's not great. You kind of had a feeling with some of the other players that were going right now that was going to be the case. I was hoping for at least a quick development. That is a bit of a miss. I can admit that. That's a bit of a miss, but he's young enough that normal development isn't a killer, and he should be able to do the job for us. So not great to pick up a depth option. I was hoping, though, obviously some of the other corners that were selected before him were looking pretty low. I think the highest was a 76. Uh, and Greg Little, oof, fuck, wow. Chargers went off the board and took Greg Little. So that's a big-time miss, for sure. That is a big-time miss for me. I should have gone with Greg Little. Tried to get a little bit greedy by taking the corner, and I paid for it. So, And case in point, we just missed out. Damon Arnett's not one of the guys I had uh, based off of just, you know, the, the grades, the combine scores. Not one of the guys I had on my final list. So that's a, that's a big swing and a miss for me at the end of the second round. Not only to have the offensive lineman that we were looking at be really good and to go early, but then to see a corner pop up that ended up being better than the one I selected, at least in terms of overall. Uh, that's, uh, that's a real swift kick. As Damian Harris is off the board, he goes to Dallas. We have our next pick coming up. It's going to be Kirby. So let's see who we can take here. But obviously, uh, that sucks to have that play out the way it did. That really sucks. So here in the third round, again, there's a couple of running backs. If anyone falls to the fourth round, we'll look there. We could look for wide receiver, although, again, I'm not sure if we'll find a game changer that we really need. Uh, O-line concerns, we're definitely looking towards the fourth and fifth. We should be able to pull off those picks. So let's see, Sheffield's there, Montre Caldwell's there, definitely not as big of a need after taking Jackson. Perry Brown in the fourth round, Gross and Love, Lichtensteiger... And Joel Red, not really looking like there's anybody that I was wanting here in the third round outside of those wide receivers and the running backs. 
So we'll definitely look to take a wide receiver here. Where are they projected to go? Vaughn Key is mid-third rounder. Person is late third rounder. Or Person is late third rounder. I could trade down with these two picks. Get a little bit of value heading into next year. And I think I'm going to do so. I think I'm going to do so. Because obviously the sting of what just happened at the end of the second round is... Uh, that's a tough pill to swallow. Uh, so let's see. A third next year and a fourth this year. That's probably going to be the one that we take. A third this year and a fourth next year. That's actually a little bit more ideal. We're going to take that offer from Carolina. We'll pick up a fourth next year just to move down a couple of spots here in the third round. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. I need to hit resume draft for the moment just for certain picks to update. Go ahead and sim that to take a 73 quarterback. And the Jets take a 72 center. I'm going to trade away this pick as well. So let's see, we have a third next year, a uh, third this, uh, next year, next year, a third this year. I'm looking for a third this year. There we go. It's not bad. I mean, it's not great. I'd like to get back more than a seventh from Oakland, but yeah, you know what? I can afford to take the pick next year on this one since we already got an extra one. So it's a, it's a third this year or a fourth this year and a third next year. Third and fourth. Can anything beat that? No nothing does so we'll make this deal with Detroit we'll trade down yet again uh, so let me just hit resume draft that'll update the pick order and we'll see Batamosi's off the board I'm not going to do this for every single round but I just want to see if anyone goes off the board that we really missed out on obviously a running back we were looking at's gone uh, let's see Maryland the wide receiver and Joseph Wagner okay so we're not in a bad spot in that no one I was looking at went off the board except for that uh, running back. So Vaughn Key and Person. So let's see. Key is a deep threat. Ran a 4-3. Relatively agile as well. Or we go for Person, who is uh, very clearly more of a slot option. 6-1. Decent vert. Not great. I think I'm going to go for Vaughn Key as the deep threat. I mean, here's the thing, though. He's a little bit one-dimensional in that if he can't beat you with his speed, he doesn't have too much else to go off of. Uh, but I think I think that's kind of what we need here. I think that's what we're going to go for. And again, now we have the 29th pick of the third round and the 9th pick of the fourth round. Vaughn Key. Let's try it. Person, he does fit the scheme, but again, the scheme's probably going to change... Oh, boy. I don't know, though. Person. Again, very one-dimensional in that he's got good hands, right? He's got good hands as a slot option. He'd be great. Or we go for Von Key. We go all-out speed and try to build an elite receiver out of that. Let me take one look really quickly. Of course, we have Kelvin Benjamin. Uh, we have Corey Coleman. What do we really need? Between the two of these guys, what do we really need? We have 25 people on this roster right now, by the way. Uh, so, Calvin Benjamin, of course, fucking 6'5", monster. Uh, not a ton of speed, though. Corey Coleman. Corey Coleman, quite a bit of speed. And uh, Zay Jones. Zay Jones, quite a bit of speed. You know, he's not great at the short options, though. Good catching. Okay, so Zay Jones could definitely be our possession option. Or our slot option, I should say. He's a possession receiver. I think we're going to go with the speed. I'm not overly sold on either of these two, uh, but I think I'm going to go with Von Key just for that crazy speed. And, hey, if we draft a kick returner in the third round, so be it. Uh, 74, normal development, nah, he's okay. He's not great, not going to be a major game changer for us, but we needed at least one more wide receiver uh, in this draft. Uh, not quite what we were looking for there, but them's the breaks. Uh, at this point, I think we are going to go ahead. Yeah, let's just sim to our next pick. We'll see who we end up getting. So we'll do it that way. Wide receiver option is off the board. There's no one who's really fallen down the board to an extreme extent. Uh, the two running backs left, we're not worried. Uh, wide receiver, we could take an option later. If either of these two fall to the fourth round, we'll consider it. Tight end, Russell Bullocks is there. We're going to look to take him. I might take him now just to make sure that we get him. O-line, Ray Tootin, Sentef, and uh, Engelberger are still there. Sheffield, Buckley, don't really don't really need either of you two. Perry Brown again to kind of 
backup Shane Ray could work. And then there's Joel Red, which, again, isn't a huge need. I'm going to go ahead and draft for need here. I'm going to take Russell Bullock. I don't expect him to be great. Uh, but if he and O'Leary can at least be a half-decent one-two punch, for now, I'm going to be okay with it. Just to have somewhat of an option there for Allen. So, Russell, it's about what I expected. Another 74 overall normal development. I'm all right with it. 80 catching. He's at least an option, and he might develop again. Uh, I just actually learned relatively recently they changed it. People were complaining about slow development players, so normal is technically the lowest you can get. Uh, still, though, at 22, he should develop into a half-decent option. He's not going to be completely useless for us. We'll see who's available here with the ninth pick of the fourth round. And a couple of players fell. A couple of players fell. So Reynolds is there. Our next pick after this is the 18th. Uh, we have a couple of wide options there. Uh, we Wow, Tootin and Sentef are already off the board. Right. Right. We did not get as much as the offensive line help as we needed. We got some of the higher-end talents in the first round, thankfully, and that's why I'm glad I did that. But obviously, uh, put it this way. The O-line is going to be weak still. It's not going to be as bad as it was last year. It's pretty much impossible for it to be as bad as it was. We may have to rely on a free agent signing, perhaps, but I am okay with it. Uh, it's We're not going to have as much help as I was hoping for, though. Uh, and that is my fault by perhaps not trading up as much as I should have. Um, but it is only our first draft with the team. We should be okay. Uh, that said, there is the guy projected in the fifth round. Hopefully I can get him with that last fourth round pick. So... We do have options. Lichtensteiger, I think it was. Let's go ahead. And I think maybe Reynolds and the wide receiver face will kneel. I'm going to take Neil here more than likely. What was... I mean, again, someone else who was fast as hell. He's 24. That would definitely sort out the uh, receiving options, though. We have four active and one pick. Actually, we don't even need you, really. Unless we get rid of someone else, we don't even really need you. Reynolds as a third uh, running back option. And just for the fact that he might be one of the better available, I'm thinking that's the way to go. I know Bradford is there as well, but I'm really concerned that there's no... like I mean, man coverage again is going to be lower. He's, he's an option. What concerned me is that lower vert jump, even though he's 6'2". He could be decent. He could be. I had other corners above him, though, on the board. I was a little bit worried about man coverage there, just for the fact that it's no higher than a C. Uh, but seeing uh, who is eligible here... Actually, Leonard Frederick is there, and I took him off the list. His, uh, his bench press numbers weren't fantastic, but at this point, he could be worth selecting just out of necessity. Could be. Grimes wasn't uh, overly impressive with some of his times. Malcolm Piad wasn't that great. Magelli as well. Uh, some of his combine numbers just weren't that impressive. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to take players who I know are less than stellar for the sake of, uh, like, oh, well, we need them. And I, I made some mistakes early in the draft. I don't think we're going to do that. Uh... We do need a third running back, and Reynolds could be the guy. Just in case of injury, Reynolds could be the guy. I'm, I'm going to take Reynolds here. I don't expect him to be amazing, uh, but this will at least solve the running back situation moving forward. So Reynolds is the pick. He's not amazing. He's a 75 with normal development, but at the very least, I'm not going to have to worry like, oh, well, and if we get an injury, we're screwed. Like, no, we have we have some running back depth now, even if McCoy ends up you know, drastically declining, and we have to get rid of him sooner. Uh, rather than later. So I'm good with that. At the very least, it wasn't a 63 overall quarterback. Am I right? I think I'm right. So who is left? Bradford's still there. Jesus. Yeah, I, he's probably going to be the guy here because I can't believe he's still available. Yeah, he's... I'm just... I'm not even going to wait. Julius Bradford's the guy. I'll take that. <laughs> I can't believe he was still there. Again, pretty worried about that man coverage rating. Let's see what it is. It's a 74. It's not terrible, but the zone coverage, if we end up running uh, a zone defense, play recognition's a bit low, tackling's pretty low. 
Uh, but that's, I mean, yeah, you, you can't complain about that being available at this stage. Uh, how he slipped to that point, I do not know, but I'll take it. Especially seeing what some other uh, some other teams are picking up. And right now, we will look to get uh, Will Engelberger. It wasn't Lichtensteiger, I was wrong. We're going to take Engelberger just for depth. Don't think he'll be great. He's not. He's a 73 with normal development, but a good depth option. I said it was for depth. It's for depth. Uh, welcome to the team, good sir. Now, we do still have players as well that we're looking at getting. There's Lichtensteiger. He was the outside linebacker. That was my mistake. Who else are we looking at here? Again, fourth round, there wasn't anyone I was really impressed with. So let's see. These are the players we have left here in the fifth round. Uh, so Jason Peck, we have Buckley and two middle linebackers. Again, a wide receiver, we're pretty much good to go. So I will probably look to take Buckley just as a depth option. Uh, we had... Uh, in fairness... Yeah, we actually need one more depth option at defensive end. Once he projected to be picked, mid-fifth, we can take him now. And we'll probably take one of the two middle linebackers. So, uh, Denard Buckley, welcome to the team. You're half-decent and a good depth option. 22, 75, normal development. I am okay with that. Unfortunately, that glitched onto the screen, so half the stats are going to be cut off, so we're not even going to bother wasting time. We are still putting together a decent team here, and as mentioned, as Devin Grimes is off the board, I was probably going to look at him next. Uh, really, we can't be worse. I don't really think the argument can be made that we're in a worse spot than last year. We're going to fill out this roster using available free agents, and I think we'll be okay. Uh, so Jason Peck is still on the board. Saxton's on the board. We just took a right end, so I'm not too worried about that. Nico Jacobs, there's a better wideout option. And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of these guys scouted because we didn't really bother with most of them. Uh, Newton's there, not concerned about running backs, of course. Uh, so I think we're pretty much good to go here. I think we're pretty much good to go. We're going to take one of these two wide receivers for the hell of it, I guess. Well, put it this way. There might not be room to keep them. Uh, but Jason Peck is 6'6 and has a crazy vert jump. So moving him to tight end might not be a bad option. Uh, whereas Sutherland, again, slot option, good hands. I'm going to take him out. But we are going to take Jason Peck and potentially move him over to tight end just to give us another option. And then we'll take a punter later on. So Jason Peck, welcome to the team. You're a 70. You're going to be better once I move you over to tight end. Uh, you're... Jesus Christ. You're 6'6 with 91 jumping. The catching is a bit low, but good lord. 6'6 with 91 jumping. I think we can develop him into a true red zone threat at tight end. I think we'll be alright. I think we can do it. Uh, our next pick here, we're definitely going to trade this away, and we have another pick coming up after this one. So we'll continue to recoup picks heading into next year. And there was a fifth round offered, and that is absolutely what we'll take. We'll take that fifth round pick next year from Cleveland to trade down. We'll sim to that next pick, trade this one away as well. Let's see, a fifth round pick anywhere? Please, hey, there we go, Baltimore. I knew I loved you. I knew I loved you. Let's uh, go ahead and make that deal. From there, when's our next pick? I'm sure we have one. We do. Uh, we'll trade this one, and then with the next one, we'll probably take a punter, and then we'll be done. So let's see, sixth round picks. Fourth round pick next year from the Patriots. Yes, please. I don't even have to, I don't even have to second guess that. Please don't tell me you just screwed up. Hey, it took a 70 right tackle from Maine. I'm happy with that. Hopefully they are too. Uh, and now we have our final pick of this draft. Again, solid work, I would say, if I can pat myself on the back. We'll go to punters. We have Brock Blackburn, Glenn Cobb, and Jaron Ihus. Uh, I'm probably going to take Blackburn. Don't know why. Good bench press. That's why. Cobb's first. Okay, I can't use that excuse. Actually, I think Blackburn's the youngest, which is why I had him higher rated. He is. For that reason, Brock Blackburn is our new punter. Him and his normal development, 70 overall. That's fine. <laughs> or I could just take the other two and make sure we get the best one. I might, actually. That would be hilarious. Eh? I'm tempted. Is that going to be the dumbest thing I've ever done? Probably. Let me see if there's anyone else on the board. Uh, no, there isn't. As far as who we should just be like, yeah, fuck it, take this guy. No. 
No. Do I want to be dumb? Do I want to be dumb for a minute? Yes, I do. Glenn Cobb, you were 68. Okay, well, it turns out I made the right choice the first time. All right, I was dumb once. I won't do it again. Well, technically, that was the that was the dumbest thing I had done in this draft, but at the end of the day, it was, what, a seventh that I wasted? Anyone want to offer me anything higher than a sixth? We'll take Carolinas, just so I don't have to scroll too much further back. Overall, in my opinion, at the very least, which is probably the least important opinion, uh, we did pretty well. We did pretty well. I'm happy with the team. Obviously, the one mistake there... Uh, going with the corner and missing out on a better corner and the tackle that we needed. Uh, that stings a little bit. Stings a lot, honestly. But uh, for the amount of picks that we ended up making in this draft, I'm happy with how we did. I think it could have been much, much worse. We have a much better foundation now on the offensive line. Holy shit, how many 7th round picks did I have from just trading away a whole bunch of nothing? I told you when I made those picks that there was an outside chance of me just not even making those selections in this draft. That is exactly what happened and will probably continue to be a thing. Uh, again, I'm a Patriots fan. The Patriot way, just keep trading down into oblivion. Just keep trading down. Who wants to make picks when you could make picks next year and then trade those picks too? It's great. This first year draft is over. Again, to take a look at what this roster is looking like. We got Michael Dieter. We got Grant Stemke. We got Bryce Love in the second round, which is crazy. Gardner Johnson and Jackson. Simon was the miss. Uh, after the Simon pick, I mean, we kind of struggled to pick up any major game changers. I think we did okay, though. Bradford ended up being pretty good. Uh, but overall, again, I'd say some really good additions to this team uh, I could go draft recap to see how other teams did. If there's someone you want me to look at for how good they might have been in terms of uh, in terms of the uh, development, let me know. Uh, but as far as this team goes, right now, 77 overall. And of course, we are going to have to scour the free agent list to make sure uh, that we're bringing in some of the top talent. Of course, we need a backup quarterback. Um, just in general, I'm going to go through uh, the entire free agent list. We'll look for the best prospects available, maybe even the top players, see who we need, and take it from there. Uh, didn't mean to go practice squad. Wanted to go quarterback. So technically, we're going to take a downgrade on the backup quarterback. I was hoping there'd be someone a little bit better. Uh, that didn't quite work out for me. Uh, but it's not, not the biggest problem. And unfortunately, uh, you're not going to have anybody half decent in terms of younger options. So, unless I take Ryan Mallett, <laughs> which I might, for the hell of it. Uh, Joe Webb is obviously the highest rated. He's currently a scheme fit, which, again, I don't think he will be. Uh, good old Chad Henney. You know what? Let's uh, let's go Ryan Mallett. Why not? He can be our backup quarterback. Why not? I will pay Ryan Mallett money. Uh, here's the thing, right? If Allen goes down to injury, we're screwed anyway. We might be screwed with him. So, it's fine. Uh, running back wise, obviously we're not going to look to take anybody there. Is there anybody prospect wise? D Browning, normal development. Looking for anybody that has quick development here with a half decent overall, and unfortunately that's not looking like it's going to be the case. Fullback, uh, nobody bit. Just no, just nobody. Wide receiver options. Mike Wallace is there, but again, after what we just did with wide receivers in the draft, I think we're fine. Uh, Darren Elgin, I think, has quick development. He does. 21, though, and a 65. Well, 21's fine, but he's only a 65. What about Sherard Pinkston? Normal development. Cameron McDowell. Normal development could be could be worth practice squatting. Could be worth it. What about Demond, Demond Duncan? Normal. Eh, we'll hold off. Anybody else with quick development, please? Probably not. Probably not. I am just going to go through this now on video as opposed to just being like, well, hey, here's all these players. And then people ask him, well, where did all these players come from? They came from the free agent list. You know what? Actually, now that you know, that's that's the process. That's what I'm going to That's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to sit there. I'm going to go through every goddamn position, find all the best prospects available. And then from there, I will optimize this roster. Uh, basically meaning I'll see who's worth keeping, who are the best available and we will figure it out. We will get this roster into the best possible shape that it could be. 
Uh, and for the record, uh, Jason Peck, I just want to, before we end the video, let's turn you into a beautiful butterfly by changing you to a tight end. So instead of being a 70, what are you going to be now? Because we needed a third tight end, I do believe. You're a 75! See? There you go. Uh, so the tight end core's not great, uh, but that's okay. We're a work in progress. We knew we were going to be. It's fine. Uh, and no, I probably won't sign um, any free agents. Uh, probably won't sign any free agent wide receivers. At the very least, we have Benjamin to throw to. We still have Coleman. Uh, Zay Jones, Vaughn Key will still try to develop. Uh, we'll, we'll be okay. Obviously, the offensive line as well. We're going to move some players around. Stem Key and Dieter, they both won't stay at left guard. Uh, we're looking okay-ish. The depth is going to be, it's going to be tough. But we took a step forward. And again, you look at some of the options here. I mean, Jesus Christ, at defensive end, we're fucking stacked. <laughs> to be honest, we might end up having to move somebody if we do. Sorry, Trent, you're the oldest. You'll probably move out of here. Uh, and that way we'll play whoever we can. Outside chance of moving someone to defensive tackle and trading star, who did drop an overall point as well, might try to develop Harrison Phillips. Uh, but overall, I think we're looking really good. Obviously right now the, the problem is sorting out the depth and trying to balance things out as well as we can. Uh, before the moment, this team's looking pretty good. The big question is whether or not we're going to be able to get back into, or just in general get into a competitive place before we potentially have to move Micah Hyde and Jordan, uh, Jordan Poyer uh, before they really start to regress. But for now, I'd say we're good to go. And of course, heading into the next draft, we already have a first, a second, we have our extra third, a couple of fourths and fifths. Uh, there's some building blocks heading into next season. So that'll do it for this draft spectacular. I hope you did enjoy. Like I said, next episode, uh, I will have this team 100% set up and good to go, optimized, and we will begin our second season with the Bills. If you stuck with me to this point, I love you. Thank you for the support. I don't have to ask you because you're already great. I don't have to ask you to support the video and support the channel. You've already done it in a big enough way. So thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Uh, again, the next day, I mean, again, upload schedule for this right now. Uh, pretty much I aim to upload this with an Ospreys episode. And then the next day is the Sabres and Blue Jays. And then the next day, Buffalo and Ospreys. So we'll see. I would like to upload every day, but right now it's not going to be a thing. It's aiming to be every other day. If I miss a day, you know, if I miss a day then obviously the wait's that much longer. And I'm sorry to do that to you, but I'm just one man. I'm just one man with a shitty computer. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.